You're watching ABC News, I'm Lara Hyams. To the unfolding situation in Melbourne first, where a number of pedestrians have been hit by a car in Melbourne city centre. Here's the latest information that we have. Police have confirmed that 14 people were injured in the attack and one of those injured includes a preschool aged child who has a head injury. Police have also confirmed that they were treating the incident as a deliberate attack, but they wouldn't say if it was terror related. Now the driver of the car was arrested at the scene along with another man and we're expecting Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews, the Victorian Police Commissioner and Police Minister to hold a media conference later this hour and we'll bring you that live here on the ABC News Channel. Victoria Police have spoken a short time ago. Police arrived at the scene within minutes and have arrested two men. Our reporter Richard Willingham joins us now from the scene. Richard, let's just recap for people that have just joined us. Can you tell us exactly uh, what happened and where you are right now? Well, good evening, Lara. I'm standing on the corner of Flinders Lane and Elizabeth Street, about 150 metres for where this incident happened about two and a half, three hours ago, when a white SUV ploughed into pedestrians crossing between crossing the two sides of Flinders Street. James, you say that that particular area is normally quite buzzing, especially just days out from Christmas. What is the kind of mood there at the moment? Uh, obviously, people have been left shaken by this. Yeah, well, I arrived um, not long after uh, the incident occurred with other media as well, and you could see the shock on people's faces. Uh, people who didn't even see the incident necessarily were just so shaken and traumatised by the aftermath and just how this has affected Melbourne. And as we've heard, two people have been arrested after that vehicle ploughed into those pedestrians near Flinders Street Station. That's in the central part of Melbourne. Again, injuring 14 people and several of those have been critical. Police arrived within minutes of the incident and detained those two men at the scene. As we've heard, they do believe that it's a deliberate attack, but at this stage, they do not know the motivation. Police and emergency services remain on the scene there. And our reporter, Emma Younger, has more from the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. And some of Australia's politicians have also made their thoughts known about this incident. Victoria Premier Daniel Andrews has made a statement via his Twitter account. He says, as you will know, there's been a horrible incident on Flinders Street. Police have secured the scene and will provide information as it's confirmed. He's recommended that people avoid the area. The trains are running, but some trams have been affected. Stay safe, check on your loved ones and thank you to our brave emergency services. We've also heard from Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull. He's also tweeted. He says, as our federal and state police and security agencies work together to secure this scene and investigate this shocking incident, our thoughts and prayers are with the victims and the emergency and health workers who are treating them. And we've also heard from the opposition leader, Bill Shorten. He's taken to Twitter saying, shocking scenes in Melbourne this afternoon. Credit to first responders who are doing us proud once again, thinking of everyone caught up in this atrocity. And here's some of the witnesses who saw the incident unfold this afternoon and they have described the chaotic scenes. And the pictures that you are seeing now, or we're waiting actually for a press conference from the Acting Chief Commissioner Shane Patton and Premier Daniel Andrews. That is scheduled for 9.30, which will be about uh, around just under 15 minutes. Uh, and they're expected to be speaking at the Victoria Police Centre in Dockland. So we'll bring you that as soon as it happens. Chris Miller from Victoria Road says people should avoid Melbourne CBD, if possible, throughout the evening. Well, I'm joined now in the studio by Tony Lockrun. He's a security analyst at Zero Risk International. Tony, thank you for joining us once again. Yeah. Let's just have a look down at this the vehicle that actually was involved in this. It's a single vehicle that caused all this damage, but this is a SUV. It's not a van like some of the other incidents around the world have been. Tell us about the significance of that. Well, it is quite significant. I, I think it's a bit of a game changer, actually. Because if you look at the higher profile of commercial vehicles, uh, they were chosen for one very good reason, is that at the end of the day they could actually kind of approach this area pretty quickly. Uh, the SUV has got 4x4 capability, uh, so it can actually go on the pavements or curves or whatever. But also on top of that, it looks like a commuter vehicle. It doesn't look any different to any vehicle within Melbourne going in any particular CBD. 
So it just blends in quite well. And I guess that adds to the what police were saying about being a deliberate attack. I guess you go undetected if you're going down that way as well in yeah. something like that. Absolutely. You know, you fit in, uh, the profile's there. You know, no one's going to question you when you come into the area. No one's going to think you're suspicious or whatever. And it just blends in. This is a little bit different as well because this didn't take place in a mall. It didn't take place uh, anywhere untoward like that. It was actually on the road, wasn't it? So just explain to us the difference there and the significance of that part. It's very unsuspecting for something like this would happen on a road. Well, it's pretty easy for the actual vehicle to uh, to be used as the actual missile, uh, in essence, really. But if you look at the geographical position there, the, the vehicle itself has gone down a, a pretty narrow side street on the left-hand side here and zigzagged all the way. In the aftermath of this, people will be uh, analysing about the different security elements that are around Melbourne. Uh, Melbourne has recently installed those, those large <laughs> bollards around the place. They're known as uh, the Rings of Steel. Mm. Tell us about their characteristics, because they're quite aesthetic as well, from my understanding, that there's greenery in them and, and what have you, but they do serve a purpose. Let's go back to London, OK, when the actual um, uh, the attacks used to happen over there. The Ring of Steel was very successful because all you did was you actually cut off the major lorries and, and uh, larger vehicles anyway to get into the area to cause this kind of damage. And it was very successful. The bollards themselves would actually make sure that vehicles couldn't get to that area. Um, but, you know, when you look at Australia and you look at aesthetically just exactly what it's like, it's the land of milk and honey, it's, it's a great place to be, it's beautiful. How do you actually kind of condition yourself to blend and, and look at that from, a, from a, an aesthetic point of view? The other thing about that is they're quite big as well, aren't they? They're about a, they a metre in diameter or something like that? Yeah, they are. And look, when, we, when we start talking uh, on our training courses, we talk to people and we explain to them where you can go to in the event of an attack or whatever. So that huge big slab of concrete, now, which is probably reinforced as well, definitely reinforced with steel, um, is going to actually slow the vehicle down enough to actually block any other particular further attack. And that's an interesting point too, because if this was a deliberate attack, if it was premeditated, yeah. um, people would be looking for weaknesses to exploit. Yes, they are. Weren't yeah. they? So what, what would they be looking for in this scenario? Look, the, if the, the would-be terrorist is going to look at uh, just exactly, uh, there's a number of things actually. First and foremost, they're going to look to find out just exactly how they can circumvent that particular obstacle to actually get behind there anyway to perform the attack. They'd be looking at weak points in the system. The weak points could be, sadly, wheelchair access, okay, where the actual roads themselves actually have been lowered or whatever, so the vehicles can get around that particular area. Uh, they were looking at um, pedestrian kind of walkways or whatever, where they can sneak in from there. Um, but, you know, any particular weakness in the system, they will try and exploit uh, from there, without shadow of a doubt. Does this work, having those bollards there and those security measures, do they work on their own or does that need to be coupled with a wider strategy? Do, for example, does there need to be more of a human presence on there for, for that to be a better deterrent? Melbourne has uh, some other security measures in place as well. There's CCTV yeah. uh, around, around the CBD area. It's also quite well lit. Uh, is, does that not serve as an adequate deterrent to stop these incidents happening? I suppose up until a couple of years ago, I would have said yes, it, it does offer that particular kind of deterrent. Uh, any, any particular security measure does. These guys, you have to understand, if it is confirmed it's a terrorist attack, they are just hell-bent on one mission. That's the end of the story for them. And that will be with the help of those uh, security measures as we, as we discussed. Yeah, yeah. Um, with the monitoring of, of those kind of areas, uh, that obviously involves security agencies from, from a state and federal uh, level. How are those departments and agencies working with uh, their sharing of information? Do you, do you think that we have a really good system that way? You do. The actual system has increased hugely over the last uh, 18 months, for instance. Um, what you've actually got now is immigration talking to uh, Homeland Security, Homeland Security talking to uh, various other counterparts around the world. Do we have other uh, nations overseas that look to us and think that's a pretty good idea, we're going to <laughs> mirror some of their strategies, or are we taking more information from um, overseas counterparts? OK, that's a, that's a really good question, now, because basically what happened is that uh, if, I, if I talk to some of my colleagues in um, the security division back in the UK or in America or Israel, Australia never really came forward years ago to talk to them about really what was going on, OK? But if it did, it was quite lightly. And everyone was quite surprised because there was a lot of things going on from the, from the terrorism point of view overseas that was basically really good information to give to individuals. That's not the case now. As 18 months ago, everyone started to get together and the information was coming through thick and fast. The Man on Morris, uh, Lynn Cafe Siege, I think was, was the catalyst 
in speeding up the process for agencies to talk together a lot harder. And uh, just uh, finally, how is uh, how are these people responding to these incidents now, especially in Melbourne? Do you find that there's a spirit of resilience or is there a, a spirit of fear coming out of that? How are we seeing uh, people respond? The, the, the public have been remarkable. I mean, if you look at the actual amount of people that have uh, tried to uh, overpower that, uh, that vehicle, uh, incredible. But if you also look at just exactly what happened uh, on, on a flight uh, with Qantas many, many years ago, um, the similar kind of thing happened where an individual was, was hell-bent on attacking the cockpit and uh, the members of the public actually just wrestled him to the ground. Tony, yeah. thank you so much. No well, let's hear now from some more people who were there at the scene. David was in the area when the incident happened this afternoon. Well, we're standing by uh, expecting to hear from uh, Victoria Premier Daniel Andrews, who will be speaking to the media shortly, just giving us an update on that incident this afternoon. Just recapping that story now, here's what we know so far. 14 people have been injured, with several in a critical condition, after a vehicle ploughed into pedestrians near Flinders Street Station in central Melbourne. Two people have been arrested so far, and that includes the driver of the vehicle. Police are yet to say whether the incident is terrorism related but they do believe it was a deliberate act. They're asking for witnesses to come forward.